This is Lloyd Griffith, and you're watching Total Entertainment. How's life treating you? Thanks for your time. Uh, good, thank you, mate. Yeah. Um, busy, just launched my tour, so it's just been a lot of sorting that out and then doing interviews and what have you, but also then just trialing out new material, doing previews and stuff like that. So it's um, it's pretty non-stop at the moment, um, really. But uh, you can't complain. No, you know, because we're going to weird, weird, weird thing. I, I, I went on tour in... In February 2020, so I'd just been on tour with Jack Whitehall. It was like this November uh, 2019, yeah. all the way through to January 2020. Then I had like three or four weeks off to then preview my show, then went out on tour, and then about, I'd say like 12 dates in, the pandemic hit, and it yeah. was like, okay, great. So then I had 80 months of doing nothing, and then uh, we're, we're, you know, we're back in. So uh, hopefully, touch wood, wood. you know, yeah. nothing, uh, no, nothing happens. So yeah. yeah I mean, how, how difficult was that for you? Because like you said, you just kicked off the tour, and you you're obviously on a bit of a high. Tour must have been going great. But how difficult was yeah. that eighteen months for you? It was yeah, it was really difficult, and yeah, I think it was difficult for a lot of people. Uh, I th obviously, a lot more people are in a lot worse situations than me. So by no means this is is a sob story. But I just think, you know, for, for performers, yeah. uh, I've, I found it with comedy to a certain point, but because I also sing as well, yeah. that was the big thing for me, just, just missing it. When you do something yeah. pretty much every day and it goes, you know, and, uh, you, you know, you, you just don't realise how much you rely on it for everyday life, for Absolutely. mental well-being, just yeah. for just the way in which you feel during the days and stuff. So it was a real struggle, you know, but luckily got got through it. And, um, you know, hopefully we don't go through it again. And it was, you say, like, you know, you're on a high. I just, I, you know, the tour had pretty much sold out due to the fact that I just supported Jack. So if yeah. I was doing a gig in, like, Le Leeds Arena... I just say, oh, come and come and see me down the road in like a small little venue, and you know you'd sell it out. So yeah. it was the, there was momentum there, and then to go, yeah, eighteen months without it, it's uh, it was a bit it was a bit difficult. But yeah, I mean, just something you touched on about, I mean, about performers. We we spoke to a lot of people over the last few months. Now, when the when people are writing new material, and it may be, like I said, it may be because you're a comedian. I don't know, but a lot of people are writing new material, musicians based on the frustrations and their experiences. Whereas a lot of them are kind of looking more towards having a bit of fun. Um, yeah. Going forward now, which category do you fall in? Like Definitely the latter. Definitely yeah. the latter. Like when I was doing like club sets, so just turning up at, you know, clubs and doing 20 minutes here and there, I was talking about the pandemic and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I did actually go, but not to get too but bogged down in it, but like my, my auntie passed away. So I went back home to like look after certain family members and, you know, I talk about having essentially at the age of thirty-eight. You know, you sh you, you don't really plan to move back in with your mum, and like they'll be like, "Well, what time are you gonna be back?" And you're like, "Well, I I simply don't know, mum." So I will. I still get that now. Don't worry about it. It, it doesn't yeah. get any easier. And she's like, "Well, uh, I, I I won't be able to sleep until you get." I'm like, "I live in London. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I go on a Thursday and I come back till Sunday. Do you know what I mean?" So um, there was that. But for this one, and, and you know, the show's called One Ton of Fun for a, a number of reasons. This, I just want it to be just nonsense. It's just people leave there, any woes, any frustrations, any kind of differences, just leave them at the door. And then I just want them to have fun for, you know, for two hours. Yeah. This is just going to be a comedy show, me doing it. It's the first time I've done a show where there's been no real theme. Like, there's always been a theme. Like last year was me trying to sing the last anthem at Wembley before an England game. Um, there was one about, you know, me having dated a dating columnist and there's one about me be, being asked to switch on the Christmas lights in Grimsby but I was turns out I was the eighth person that they asked you know and so what I'd do to get, you know get number one um but yeah I, I this one is just I just I've never done a show where it's just jokes you know what I mean and I'm realistically let's be honest you know what I mean there, w there will be some sort of theme by the end of it but I just want I just want it I don't really want to reference the only thing I reference a little bit is the fact that I uh, I got into candles during lockdown. That's the yeah, only right. real thing I kind of like talk about. So, um, 
Yeah, are you obsessed with candles though? Because we have a friend that spends an absolute living fortune on candles. Um, yeah, I mean, I was quite lucky. I was getting sent quite a few candles, but I mean, even where, where I'm, I'm just in my kitchen at the moment, I've just got a couple. So this one, Sister and Co, was sent to me. This one um, is a is a diptyque one. Now that has got a dirty burn because the, the the wick wasn't trimmed, and I'm, I will have to say that was my girlfriend that would have done that because that wouldn't have been a, a rookie error by me. Um, so I became like a little bit obsessed. I got like a wick trimmer as a oh, okay. yeah yeah. I got a wick trimmer. Um, special lighters. Um, to light. um, well, I was thinking about that, and I was speaking to my promoter. He was like, "Should we just get some? Should we just make some candles and sell them as merch?" I was like, "Let's try and get the let's try and get the show written first, okay? Before I start turning to Joe Malone." Um, so, uh, but yeah, oh, no, so I've, I've been to shows. Know. I've been to shows with bands and comedians, and there's been all sorts of crap on merch desks. So, candles yeah. are the of. Well, people buy them though. People yeah, buy them. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. So, I, if this this show is just it's just it's called One Ton of Fun. The reason why it's called One Ton of Fun, um, two two real reasons really. Growing up, like my mum and my two aunties were quite fat, and it was like an in joke within Grimsby. They were just called the Weather Girls because the Weather Girls were a band um, in the seventies and eighties who were just two fat women who sang "It's Raining Men," and it just became. And it wasn't. It wasn't poisonous it wasn't um horrible or bullying they were just known as the weather girls and that's what they called themselves and stuff before they were called the weather girls um the actual band they were called um two tons two tons of fun and yeah. i always thought that was quite funny and then i went on holiday in september 2012 with rob beckett me and him had been to the fringe we didn't really like it it wasn't really us i mean it's very middle class festival both performance and audience wise and we just didn't really seem to fit in properly. Anyway, I went to Menorca, had this really quite nice other day where it was just the two of us going to a sports bar every night, drinking a pitcher of lager each, watching whatever European football was on the TV, and then going to the Hawaiian bar. And the resident band, resident performer, was a lady called um, A Ton of Fun. And she just got up there and it was great. And I was always said to Rob, I was like, oh, you always want to call me show like one ton of fun. I, th I think it'd be quite, you know, like she was up there, she was enjoying it. You know, and and so that's that's why really. So the two worlds have kind of collided. Is he? Yeah, uh, I mean, you mentioned Rob wanting the title. Is he a bit peed off that you've grabbed it before him? No, because he's not really a ton, though, is he? He's like, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know how you describe him, but he has some good names for his shows. I think what's the yeah. latest one, uh, Wallop. I think he's had Mouth of the South. Yeah. So um, yeah, but I always do, I, I I message him. I was like, right, I'm going to call me show once on a funny. He's like, finally, so I've been ten years <laughs> in the making. So um. Yeah, so that's that's why. But it essentially, it's just me wanting to have fun for two hour, two and a, no, two hours or however long it is I'm on stage for, and uh, and just let the audience hopefully feel happier when they left than when they turned up. Yeah. I mean, what what are you what are you most looking forward to about going back on the road again? Because it's quite a hefty tour. It goes through to March, doesn't it? Yeah, it's two two months. Just just doing it, like just just when you're on tour, just being able to do what you do. Every night, yeah. You know, I think I think it goes. It's pretty much. I think it's Tuesday to Saturday every, every week Brilliant. for two months. You know, just being able to go to go to a different town, different city every night, and do the thing that you love that hopefully you're good at. Yeah, and just have people really be appreciative. And this is the thing. This is why I'm not sure if you've ever been to the Edinburgh Festival before, the Fringe Festival. But it's just so different, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you've got people there that don't necessarily know who you are. Yeah. They're there because they've been told by someone else. And also, like, sometimes you get the attitude of, like, they'll be there crossed arms and just almost be like, well, you know, we could be we could be anywhere, but we're here yeah. to see you. Okay? There's 300 shows on. So when you go to Exeter on a Friday night or a Swindon on a Sunday or, I don't, I, you know, like Birmingham on a, on a Wednesday... They're there for a night out. Yeah, they absolutely. want to see you, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a twofold thing. I mean, you've written this show, you know, and hopefully the best show you can write at the time. And they've paid for a babysitter. They've come out. They've had dinner beforehand. It's a biggie, you know. So it's it's a completely different thing to an Edinburgh yeah. show, and that's what I just love. And then to be able to go out for two months, be able to do it, and then also with that, you know, what I mean, I do love travelling. You know what I mean? I know it sounds. I'm not just saying this to to try and sell. No, my it's ticket. part of the job, isn't it? It's kind of it comes with the territory. I absolutely love travelling up and down the country. It means I can go and see an even song 
a cathedral, do you know what I mean, before a service or maybe catch a football game on a on a on a Saturday or, or something like that. So yeah, it's it's just nice to get out there amongst it. And uh and as I say, like you just get so many appreciative audiences. Yeah. On my tour last time, I don't think there was one bad or uh, there was one weird audience actually. And we're not going back to Great Torrington. <laughs> Do I dare ask, or should we just leave that one and move on? I mean, I just don't know what they're expecting, but I think the answer is it wasn't me. Right. Um, and it was just, it was, I just almost think that they were just there because it was just something to do on a, on a on a Friday night in North Devon. But um, my mate, Luke, who is my support for that tour, he is from North Devon. I mean, they loved him, uh, and they were very indifferent to me. So he just have to go, well, that's just to write off North, uh, for, uh, write off Great Torrington and just um, crack on. Okay, brilliant. I mean, you've described the show as kind of not really having a theme, but I've read it's a kind of mix of stand-up, impressions, singing, kind of whatever comes to mind. Yeah, well, it's basically stand-up and this singing in it. So I'm a, I'm a classically trained singer as well as a, as a stand-up comedian. So the, the, you know, it'd be a, a waste and my mum kicks off the fact that she's, you know, spent a fair bit of money on singing lessons for me, you know, up until the age of uh, 14. So, she, you know, I, I do still have to keep her in there just to keep her happy. But also the fact that it is weird, I mean, just having some you know, a little fat northern bloke from Grimsby telling knob jokes who they can then belt out a lovely little bit of um, classical core music. So there is... the audience on the toes, though, because they definitely know oh, what yeah. they expect. Yeah, exactly. And that and that's the thing. And I, I, I do... It's... You know, if you think back to... Not variety days, but blue coats, that stuff. You know what I mean, yeah. like my favorite perform, you know, favorite comedians growing up. Yeah, they had that bit about them. Do you know what I mean, Lee yeah. Mack, Lee Evans... Um, sure not to a certain point. You know I mean, they just had this kind of old school entertainer feel about them in that they were they could turn their not a hand to anything, but you know, Lee Evans would, would you know bring out the piano. Lee Mack was, I think, a blue coat and stuff. So yeah, I just I I, I do feel like I am a little bit of a an, an entertainer more than a, a classically pure stand-up, and I am absolutely fine with that. Okay. I mean, where where does your kind of real passion lie? I mean, you've talked about singing, comedy, impressions. I mean, where does your real passion lie? In all of that, what you really kind of get the biggest buzz out it's, of? It's twofold. It's stand up and singing are the, are the, the two things. Um, stand up, especially. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I always thought I was going to be a singer growing up, and I was trying to. I was. I've, I've just finished an opera, actually. Um, it was a football opera. Um, and we finished on Sunday. Lee Mack did the first three nights. I did the second, the, the last three nights. We were basically playing the commentators, and I was chatting to some of the singers, and I said, like, "How did you get into singing?" and you know, everyone's got a different story. And for me, like, I was a singer at school and then got, like, basically um, scouted by a, a, a choir school. Right. Um, so I went to this choir school. And then, for me, it was only ever singing that was a, an option. Do you know what I mean? Because I was yeah. good at it. I was a performer. You know, I'd, I'd do school plays and stuff and school musicals. And I was just all, for me, it was just always singing was the thing. There was no other. There was literally nothing else. I was even entertaining. I was just yeah. like... It's going to be music. It's going to be singing. And then when I got to London, like later on down the line, and I went to a, a, a comedy club for the first ever time. And I must have been like 23, 24. And it blew my mind. And I was like, oh, I think I want to do this. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just hadn't been given the option or, you know, knew that it was something that you could do. So yeah. it's stand up has been, you know, I say I've been doing it 15 years now um, since I kind of like first had a foray into doing open mic stuff. Right, okay. That's that's like the absolute love, but I couldn't give up singing as well. Like singing right. is something that is will always be a part of me, and uh, yeah, I just just I love doing them both. And there's not many people, well, not many people. Obviously, a lot of people, you know, can sing and and tell jokes, but um, I just want to be able to mix them both so people yeah. go, oh, it's a little fat bloke that sings, great. Okay, I mean, you talked about um, being a show off at school. I read that that was part of your. Something you did. I mean, what what sort oh, yeah. of thing did you do? Literally anything, like to make people laugh. Yeah. Like I remember, I used to just like dive on the floor, like dive in the air, just to make people laugh. The two yeah. girls, Sadie Turner and Kay Sadler, and like obviously two very good looking girls. And I weren't the most beautiful lad of the world. I wasn't the thinnest lad in the world. I was a little small specky. You know, a little chubby bloke who I was like a fat Harry Potter. You know what I mean? Harry Potter mixed with um Deirdre Barlow. That's kind of what I look like. Right. And 
I just used to dive through the air and, and, and just fall on the floor and that it would make them laugh. And then I'd come back and like, I'd have holes in my trousers and mum would be like, oh, you've been playing football again? I'd be like, no, I've just been diving. In, for football, I was like, no, just diving to, just to make friends. She was like, Jesus. I'd do anything. I would like, like put on voices, um, all sorts of, all sorts of weird singing stuff. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really, really, really odd. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it, yeah, I just would, would literally do anything to make people laugh. So, so obviously stand up's a, a natural progression for you then? I think so, yeah. yeah. It's obviously working so, out. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it just, to be. Just, I mean, just from this though, I mean, football's your other big passion. Um, is that, yeah. That's a career path, obviously. Why didn't you go down that path? I mean, I was terrible at oh, football at school. Yeah, I was just, was, like, a, I, I think I big it up a little bit too much at how good I was as a kid. I was abysmal. Growing uh, up, yeah, really bad. So we really... went. Um, we had. A, we. I went away with work, and I was literally getting wiped. I was getting the floor wiped with me, and I just yeah. had, well sod this, and just went through the back of one of the sales salesmen and took his legs out. And yeah, I, was I mean, to do this. I wasn't even able to do that. Like it was just. I was. Yeah, I just was too short, too fat. Loved it, but with with. I don't know. In the back of my head, I was like, well, I'll do something in football, but I'm just not sure what. And then. Uh, you know, comedy does open a lot of doors for you uh, in, in certain respects. So, you know, I was able to kind of luckily, you know, do do the stuff that I've done because of that. But, yeah, I've got, you know, I've got friends that went through academies and have been footballers yeah. and, you know, are coming towards the end of their retirement now. I mean, in their 30s, 40s and stuff. And um, very different, you know, very different uh, paths. But even I went to the Grimsby game the other week and it's freezing and I had a big North Face, North Face coat on and I was like, they're just in a t-shirt and shorts. I'll be absolutely. Yeah. Do I want to do this? Um, and ultimately, the answer is yeah. I probably would have done given yeah. given the option. So uh, it, it, was, it was definitely a passion growing up, but it was it was absolutely not an option. Yeah, yeah you kill me both. I mean, just on that note, I mean, you have talked about singing. I mean, is that Liam Gallagher won't sing at won't perform at Old Trafford for obvious reasons? Are there any uh, are there any grounds you won't perform at if you were asked? Uh, for yeah, footballing reasons. for footballing reasons. So, like, you know, so a few months back, um, for the first time in 50 odd years, um, well, yeah, 60 odd years, there was uh, obviously we, I, I sang the last anthem at Grimsby Town, yeah, uh, Blundell Park, and then also Brentford Community Stadium. Um, you know, it's just it, you just don't sing the national anthem at those games unless there is, you know, a, a royal death or a coronation. And so I was asked to sing there, and a few others did make inquiries. And again, just timing wise of where I was working and stuff, it, it didn't work out. But you know, the, uh, and I won't name who they were, but um, that had someone like Scunthorpe kind of come in yeah. or Lincoln, you know, I would absolutely, I couldn't do it just because I'd get so much stick. Yeah. You know, and realistically, like, you know, I can see why Liam Gallagher wouldn't sing at Old Trafford. I mean, and that's absolutely fine. There's a huge rivalry. I mean, they're both yeah. in the same city. They're both in the same league. You know, Grimsby, our rivals change every two or three years. Just depends yeah. on who's in the same yeah. league. I mean, yeah. for a period of time, it was Doncaster. Then Doncaster got good. So a period of time, it was Lincoln. Lincoln got good. For a period of time, it was Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe got shit, and we got good. So it kind of it just absolutely overlaps the whole time. Yeah. And then it was Hull. I don't even think Hull have ever been rivals, really, because we literally just, it was sliding doors moment. So, I don't. yeah, I think, I think Scunthorpe and Lincoln are the two where I'd be like, I, I wouldn't be able to do that just because of, Kick back from uh, other fans. Okay, okay. Just going forward, Dan. I mean, next year is going to be quite busy for you with the tour, but you've also got a doc uh, drama that you're appearing in. A crossroads. Yeah. So it's um yeah it's it's a, it's a crossroads. It's about uh crossroads. Um. So that's coming out. I, I think early next year, okay. uh, and that was fun, but very different kind of job. You know, I, I do, do act as well, and obviously very lucky to be able to be able to do that. But with this, it was quite an interesting role because you're playing two characters. Yeah. Um, but also two characters that people know. And one of those characters people know very well. So it was really interesting. And again, great to do your homework to be able to, you know, perform uh, as as two people that there are reference points for. You know, you can't just get away and go, oh, I'm going to play this character like this. Yeah. You know, you, you do need to kind of like do your research and stuff. So I've, I've, I've watched a lot of Crossroads in the last year. Do you think, yeah? Do you think you have much in common with Benny? 
Um, with Paul, I think definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think I think there was, you know, what once it comes out and shows you like what I look like, you'll you'll go, oh, actually, yeah, they, you know, we do look quite similar. Um, but with Paul, definitely. I mean, you know, stature, size, and and, and stuff like that. But it was great. It was great to work on such a such a great show. Not, not mainly because obviously everyone everyone a lot of people know Crossroads of a certain age. Yeah. When you say Crossroads, the the character that you think of probably first and foremost is is Benny. So you know to be able to be cast as that was you know it was brilliant. But also to work with a team that we worked with. I mean Russell T Davies is obviously one of the greatest writers of a number of generations, not just, uh, you know, the, the current generation. Peter Hall, the um, the director who directed It's a Sin, you know, I was lucky enough to work with them briefly on, on It's a Sin, a little small role in that. Right. And then obviously the cast in, in, involved with it, you know, Connor, Neil, Helen Bottom Carter, Chloe Harris, I mean, just really brilliant actors. So, um, yeah, it was, a bit, it was, I was very, uh, very lucky to do that. Brilliant. Looking, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, oh. And then, obviously, that that keeps you quite busy for 2023. I mean, what what how's the rest of the year pan out for you? Well, this is the thing, really. Like at the moment, it's just it's just the tour, and then it's quite interesting. It's quite weird because obviously, um, with with acting stuff, you know, you audition, and then it's um, a few months later, two or three months later, that you start you start filming. So for me, at the moment, I've just taken off. Uh, all I'm going to be doing is working on the show until I go out on tour. And then when I go out on tour, I'll be going on tour, but I can guarantee I'll be doing auditions, self-tapes in various hotel rooms around the country, you know, in preparation for, you know, doing stuff and having meetings with people to then, you know, do do more acting once the, once the tour uh, curtails. And what's interesting as well, next, I was actually looking at my diary this morning, it's next summer, I think, is the first summer where there's, there'll be no, it's uh, an odd year, so there'll be no... Um, yeah tournaments so there'll be no euros or world cup we've just had a world cup so i might even actually get a holiday so my girlfriend's been pestering me to, to go on a holiday you know i've been wanting to go on holiday as well so you know i think um i think we'll try and get a nice little holiday in somewhere it's gonna have to be somewhere with a sports bar though just in case no not bar. somewhere with a sports bar <laughs> maybe even no tribute acts maybe somewhere Quite glamorous, you know. It depends how I guess it depends how well the tour sells yeah, as yeah. opposed to where I actually go. So we'll see. You know, either North Devon or Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> tour Bay or, or Texas. Yeah. Brilliant. I mean, I'm really looking forward to the show. I'm hoping we can get to one of the dates. Um, it's been great talking to you. I mean, like you said, you just want people to have fun when they come out. Have you got any message for fans? Well, not really. Not really. It's just, it's just that, it's that situation where you go in. There's a lot going on at the moment. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot going on at the moment. You know, with cost of living crisis, with energy bills, with you know the current state. And I just think that, and I'm not just saying this to get people to the show, but I think people just need to go to stuff and forget things for a little while. Do you know what I mean? So to be able to go to a theatre for two hours where the heating hopefully will be on. Do you know what I mean? So you get to save about four hours of heating at home anyway. As I say, just leave all your woes at the door and just just have a laugh. Um, and as I say, hopefully leave happier than when you, when you turned up. So that's kind of that's kind of it, really, because ultimately, you know, depend. It doesn't matter who you support, football team wise or politically wise. You know, we do just want to be as happy as possible, really. So come up, have a laugh, go home. <laughs>